Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Lens of Truth, with me Ivan Florentino, and for today's video, one of the last games that I completed for 2022 was a big one, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. This is one of those games that I was playing in between Splatoon 3 and Bayonetta 3, which I recently completed as well, and that review video should be up by the time this one's out. This is one of those huge RPGs that I knew was going to take a while, and I've been taking my time editing this video so hopefully you guys enjoy this review if you're brand new to this channel consider hitting the like button ring the bell and leaving a comment let's get to it before we move on to the story elements which will take a lot longer and there's going to be spoilers ahead so i will warn you in advance for that let's get on to the graphics monolith soft is known for their grand scale and taking advantage of their hardware and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 just outdid themselves and it's more of a combination of Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 in the graphics department. The vistas, the awe-inspiring monsters, the sense of scale, the animations are just so so well done. Every different locale has so much variety and so much animals, so much life. Not only is this game gorgeous on the big screen, but on the handheld, especially the Switch OLED. Come on, hurry up! The Queen's anniversary is gonna start without us, guys! The colors pop, the deep, rich blacks also help contrast all the bright colors, and nothing is blurry like the controversial Xenoblade 2 did on the handheld version. It looks amazing. And this also goes down to the cinematic cutscenes that just works so well with the camera movement the angles out of the xenoblade series part one and two i feel like xenoblade 2 has the most in variety when it comes to the locales but xenoblade 3 does something a little bit different when it comes to being a bit more cohesive things just feel a lot more lived in and a lot more alive you'll notice animals roaming around the clouds the grass moving and both the character models and enemy models are just a lot more detailed compared to the first two and it just it just went above and beyond to make everything feel grand and higher budget and that also goes down to the voice acting your caution dulls your insights whether it's between the action sequences and their banter between them all the side characters the voice acting nails every time is that it it's not Cavessi. Definitely not Agni and either. The spark is that? Is it that bad? Yeah. Something's not right here. Something just feels off. Noah's intuition's never wrong. Where it really shines is in the emotional, serious moments where the actor's talents really shine through. Yeah. My time, My time left. left. <laughs> Think about it. Wouldn't want to lose track of time and just run out. Today it's exactly three months. Three more months. And then I'll be gone from this world. And what rounds this all off is the amazing music that just hits so hard, so differently with its serious tones that this game provides. And let's not forget that Monolith Soft made custom flutes just for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 to create its unique sound. And let's not forget how hard the flute guy went off on the music awards and where Xenoblade 3 finally was recognized for its music. So just a quick warning, there's major spoilers ahead when it comes to the story, characters, and any kind of game mechanics introduced later on in the game. So when it comes to the combat system, things can get a bit complicated, but here are the basics. 
So the Xenoblade series plays more like an action MMO RPG where your characters roam around the battlefield. When you encounter an enemy, they start auto attacking and all you have to do is you input your button controls and it activates a class art, which is a magic system with their weapons. And one of the best things it does is that you're able to go into the menu system and actually try out some of these drills. There's an actual control guide on like part one or two and it makes things a lot easier to learn just in case you forget some of its game mechanics. Things will begin to click as you play more and more and you defeat different types of enemies and bosses. Things with auto attacking, targeting lines, arts, talent arts, and how the aggro and art combos work. And they're fairly easy to pull off. All you have to do is use the buttons corresponding to the left and the right side of your controls. And Xenoblade 3 does a better job than part 1 or 2 did because it combines both of their art systems and streamlines everything and makes it less complicated and more satisfying to do. Along your adventure, you'll also be able to meet different characters and different heroes that you'll actually be able to join your team. You'll eventually be able to use their art class and switch everyone's art class at any time and you level them up, attach gems, skills, change all the arts and accessories. There's a lot of variety when it comes to playstyle. There's no more gotcha system from Xenoblade 2 with the random characters that you unlock and it brings back the gem system from Xenoblade 1 as well. As you go on different missions and side quests in the game, you're able to recruit different characters on your side, and it's really cool how it plays along with the story, and it just works very well. So you got yourselves an intel you gun, huh? Guess I've gotta give the old fool credit where it's due. Uh, intel. And the new game mechanic added to this is the interlinking system where your partner characters combine and interlink with each other and their soul trees can also be upgraded using soul points the more you play the more you unlock the stronger you will become so you can see the systems can be very deep but as you're playing along because the game is very well paced things will start to click and things will become second nature in a different part of the game you'll unlock party skills that'll help you traverse the different areas like sliding on ropes, and climbing on vines. The setting of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 takes place in the world of Ionios, which was merged from Bionis and Mechonis from Xenoblade Chronicles 1. and all rest from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. The people split into two nations, Kevis and Agnes, and they each have their own respective queen along with soldiers, which are grown in pods to the physical age of 10, and then live only 10 more years after that, and then they die. This is a cycle of the never-ending war with one another. And the underlying theme of this game is life and death. And to quote Noah, Fighting in order to live, and living to fight. That's the way of our world. Ionios. A Pharaonis, an iron giant god, is a huge military mobile base that doubles as a living place for all the army soldiers and every colony has one. And housed within this colony is a flame clock. And the purpose of this is when a human is killed, their energy is released from the body and used to prolong one's life. And the way that Noah and Mio, both being offseers, play music with their flutes to respectfully mourn and send them off after they pass on, and this is a never-ending cycle of this world. So close to making it. <sighs> Thank, Thank you, you for doing, doing this with me. me. Well, this, this is what we're meant, meant to, do. to do. To send on the voices of the departed is an offseer's purpose. Our story begins when six soldiers, Noah, Uni, and Lanz from Kevis, meet up with Mio, Tyon, and Senna from Agnes. 
when they meet an older man, an actual aged adult, which is a shock to them. He helps them unlock the ability to interlink with one another and create the Ouroboros Fuse. He tells him to go to a land pierced by a giant sword where his city lies, and this is called the Sword March, and this is where our hero's adventure really begins. And as for the villain and main antagonist of this third installment, to put it simply, Mobius are consuls who take form of a demonic version of an Ouroboros. In order to survive, Mobius must take life from other humans bound by flame clocks. And our hero's true adversary is called Zed. He is the leader of the consuls and is often seen in an old amphitheater. Most consuls wear red armor with a purple corner in the center and a red cape. Consuls can also take a form of a large demonic giant known as a Mobius. And this is their version of interlinking which makes them very dangerous. And Zed is not an individual, but a concept. Zed is a collective form of Mobius and his consuls are his avatars. And when someone becomes Mobius, they inherit memories of their past lives. Individuals can only be revived as a Mobius just once, and once they die, they are considered dead permanently. Unlike Cabessi and Agni in humans, most of Mobius are afraid of death, and this is why they fight and kill in order to live. So, to wrap up this video, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is one of the best games I've ever played on the Nintendo Switch, and it's one of my top games of 2022. This is one of those games that you must play if you're a fan of JRPGs. Now, one of the weakest points of this game that I do have to admit is most of the members of Mobius are just one-dimensional, and then when you do encounter them, into a boss encounter, and then just kill them, with no actual backstory to them. However, the complex story the ending that I will not spoil here, the easter eggs that it introduces to bring up events and elements and characters from Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 is just perfect. It's one of those games that you must experience. This game is very, very well paced. The likable characters, the voice acting, this is one of those few games that I just, I was very impressed how these characters started off hating each other and then slowly end up having a bond with one another. It just felt so natural and not forced at all, and over my 80 plus hour adventure that I'm continuing to side quests and main missions to, you're going to really really enjoy this. Thank you guys so much for watching this video on my review, and if you're new to my channel consider hitting the like button and ringing the bell as it will help me out greatly. And see you next time. The flame clock, it has to go! Uroboros abhor this world. They must be erased without a trace.